Good morning. It's Thursday, April 16th. Uh, it's going to be an interesting topic uh, this morning, very relevant for today. Um, I, people are looking for answers out there, so if this moves you, touches you, I'd like to encourage you to to share it, uh, to push the share button, to share it with your friends afterwards. We're looking at Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Morning, Grace. Um, here's what it says. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution. The devil will put you in prison. You know, how much power does the devil really have? Uh, the question today is asked is, can Satan cause illnesses and diseases? Can Satan cause a virus? That question is asked, being asked today, and and we have to look look at Scripture for the answer. Uh, about twenty five percent of the miracles that Jesus did. Morning, Jackie. About twenty five percent of the miracles that Jesus did involved demons. When he when he healed blind, I don't have time to go through them all, but when he healed the blind, it was. Uh, etc. And I'm going to read one in, in Luke 13, to just one, to give you some insight into this, okay? I'm going to read verses 10 through through 16, so, so listen to this now. On the Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, well, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then she put her hands, then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue ruler said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered him, You hypocrites, don't each of you in the Sabbath untie his ox and donkey from a stall and lead it out and give it to water? Now listen to this. Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, not be set free on the Sabbath day from what has bound her? Imagine, she's crippled. And Jesus is saying it was Satan who has bound her for those 18 years. It's like, whoa, whoa. Uh, so the question today is, how, how much of the illnesses are directly caused by, by Satan? We don't know exactly, but, but from Scripture, we know that much is. Now, Satan is indirectly uses the natural fall of us from grace in the Garden of Eden. Um, he was the one that tempted, tempted and caused us to sin and, and fall. So, our sin as a result of Satan are the things that man causes bacteria, viruses, malnutrition, accidents, old age, murdering, etc. Uh, and most sicknesses fall under these categories. So the virus today is a result, probably a result of man's fall, and Satan is certainly using it, although he most likely indirectly caused it. So, and we also need to look at the fact that Satan tempts us to fall into, into deep sin. And then God, at times, uses sicknesses to punish us. It's like, whoa, really? Uh, there's many examples in the Old Testament when God sent plagues to punish and get the attention of his people. Even though these plagues affected everyone at the time, God was only trying to speak to his people. Uh, could this be the same case for today's virus? I believe yes. It's affecting the whole world, but I believe God is using it to speak to us Christians. He's trying to tell us something. Uh, let's look at some, some scriptures in the Old Testament to see how, how God did this. Uh, we're going to look first at Numbers. I'm going to read, I'm going to read some verses here in Numbers 16.45. It says, Get away from the assembly so I can put an end to them at once. And he fell face down. This is God angry. Then Moses said to Aaron, Take your censer and put incense in it along with fire from the altar and hurry to the assembly to make atonement for them. 
Wrath has come out from the Lord. The plague has started. So Aaron did as Moses said and ran into the midst of the assembly. The plague had already started among the people, but Aaron offered the incense and made atonement for them. He stood between the living God and the dead, and the plague stopped. But 14,500 people died from the plague. So a couple of things we learn here. God was angry with his people, so he sent a plague to discipline them. And then Aaron steps in between God and people and pleads with God and changes God's mind. Wow. Wow. So what that's telling me, excuse me, what that's telling me is God could, God is speaking to us Christians. He's disciplining us for something. And and we, we like Aaron, could petition with God and get God to do less than what he was planning on doing. This is the first Samuel 6, 19. It says, but God struck down some of the men from Beth Shemesh, putting 70 of them to death because they had looked into the Ark of the Covenant. The people mourned because of the heavy blow the Lord had dealt them. The Ark of the Covenant is where, where God dwelled when they were out in, 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 in battle. He lived in the Holy of Holies in the temple, but when they would go to war, they would put he would he would be with him in the ark. And no one was allowed to go into the into the Holy of Holies in the temple, and no one was allowed to look in the ark. Well, some of the people went against, went against God, looked into the ark, and as a result, God struck them dead. Wow. Wow. Uh, really interesting. Really interesting. And then now let's look at one in the New Testament here. This one is, this one will get your attention. Communion back at that time, like today, we just take a little a piece of bread and a little bit of wine. Back then, it was an actual meal. It says, therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sin and against the body and blood of the Lord. A person ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and the drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord, eats and drinks judgment on themselves. Now listen to this. This is why many of you are weak and sick, and a number of you have died. Holy smokes. God. God. So, Satan directly or indirectly causes today's virus. God uses these viruses to get the attention of the people, even though it's affecting the whole world. God has done this many times in history. Let me just give you some. The Black Plague in the 1300s killed over 50 million people, uh, about 60% of Europe at that time. Smallpox in the 1800s killed over 30% of the people, mostly young. The original flu, influenza, killed one-fifth of the world in the early 1900s. Recently, it was SARS, polio, AIDS. So God, many times in history, has sent plagues and diseases to, to the world. He uses, he uses Satan directly and indirectly. You, you all know the story of Job, where God allows Satan to... to to use Job and bring all kinds of sicknesses and, and, and illnesses on him. Uh, God allowed him to do that. So regardless of who causes this corona this corona virus or this COVID-19, God is trying to tell us Christians something. He's disciplining us for something. Let's, uh, let me close with this. Second Chronicles 7, 13 through 15 says this. Um, when I command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Wow. Lots to think about. What is God telling us today? Repent. Turn from our way, the ways that we, were, we Christians were going. Repent. Turn away from it. Ask for forgiveness. 
and then God will hear us from heaven and will heal our land. If this moved you, touched you, I, 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 I tell you, share this so others can hear this because this is the question that people are asking today. Uh, tonight will be a Bible will be a Bible study in the Book of Acts at seven o'clock. Many of you join us. God bless you and stay safe.